welcome everyone. Railbird Pool TV on Facebook and YouTube here. Live from the Four Bears Casino and Lodge in Newtown, North Dakota. Someone would please comment. If we got volume, it'd be great. This is Ryan Johnson. I'll be commentating a match until I play my first match. So. This is 10 ball action here. How is that now, Colt? Is that better? Excellent. Welcome, everyone. Ten ball action. Great draw here. We got uh, North Dakota's best. Versus one of the best from Manitoba. Uh, Rory Hendrickson, of course, from Mapleton, North Dakota, taking on Cornell McLean Jr. out of Winnipeg. Playing 10 ball here. No early 10s and no 10s on the break. So if you legally pocket the 10, like on a 210 combo, it just spots up and you continue to shoot as long as you legally called the 10. Templates are allowed. It's a great shot there from Cornell. Position was going to be tough for the three, but he could get aggressive here, play the three six, or you can try to put the cue ball on top of the six if you can get the, the three to go by the six and then lay him right on the the six ball. He might take it on. He's. I'm worried about the three leaking to the right a little bit here, though. So he's got to be careful. Yeah, he played that safe I was talking about, and he didn't. Didn't really hit it good. He was trying to get the cue ball, but he kind of lost track of what the three was going to do. Rory's out in the open here now. Six to the seven will be. Something to be uh, aware of a little bit here. Considering where the nine ball's at, you're gonna wanna be good on the seven, the eight, and then of course the nine, so you're not running into that 10 ball, so. I think you'll want to get rather full on this uh, six, whether he shoots it in the, the long pocket or in the short pocket down here, he's going to want to be rather full on it. Maybe a little bit going towards the, the left-hand rail as we're looking. Now he's looking to go forward and just he'll run through on the six for the seven. I don't know if he can come back out. I think he can go into the bottom rail here and back out if he wants to, wants to do that, but... If you're interested in the brackets, we got them on mpapool.com. mpapool.com. The women's ladies divisions is on there too for the nine ball. They just started too, so. Yeah, he's kind of caught on what he wants to do here, but knowing Rory for surely, he'll commit to the shot before he pulls the trigger. He likes to size up the shots, and you think he might be looking to pull the trigger, and then he'll get back up and look again. He's just getting a feel for different things here. Yeah, he's going to come back out for the same pocket here. That's what he tried to do, and he didn't do very good there, but that's going to work out pretty good, all things considering. 
that could have been disaster if he'd have laid right on there. He might not have had a shot, but as it is, he got away with it temporarily. Let's see if he can cash it in, though. He wants to be rather full on the seven. That'll work just fine. If he can get the uh, angle to uh, to go to the left rail here and spin right into the uh, line of the nine, I think that's what he'll do. Uh, he's going to go with this angle here. He can come down one rail, too. It's early yet. He's getting comfortable with the equipment and that, the tables, table conditions. But uh, I didn't much care for this angle if I was playing, but this will work. He'll be able to go forward. With the, he'll be able to just go slightly forward here and come down. Wants to be rather full on the nine. He come into the second rail. Went a little bit long here. He overhit it. See, that's why I liked going to the short rail and just leaving the angle to send the cue ball where you could just stun with a, just a s little bit of outside left and you would have spun right. You would have come right into the line of the nine and your speed wouldn't have nearly had to be as precise. Because when he went to the short rail, his speed has to be a lot of better. He tried to widen it out with by hitting that second rail t so that he could... Uh, Gauge the speed a little bit, but he still overhit it. He'll play for the same hole here. He should be able to. He's not real comfortable yet, though. It's first rack, so. This will be big for him if he can get through this. With Considering he's not uh, really had the cue ball too sharp here throughout this whole run out, so. I expect to let his stroke out. He'll go two or three rails. A little bit outside spin. That way you can let his stroke out here and then uh, you don't have to worry about a bad contact between the 10 and the cue ball here. So expect him to hit it pretty firm here. Just like that. Yeah. Good confident stroke. Well, Rory uh, got his way through it, his experience. Takes a one nothing lead. Playing a race to seven here, alternating break. Our first look here at uh, Cornell McLean Jr. Uh, is a break. Let's see, uh, expect him to pop it somewhere near the center. He's got a really good break in eight ball, so I'm pretty certain. I've never watched him play ten ball yet, but... I think his break's going to be similar to his eight ball break. They're using a template, so let's see if he gets those second row balls to go towards the sides here, and then uh, the corner balls to go four rails. So the five and the four towards the sides. Let's see if he gets that kind of action here. See what kind of pace he uses here. Howdy there, Nick. Yeah, that worked out nice. <laughs> he got both of them, both second row balls to go in, and he's sitting real pretty here on the one. That looks like the one to the two, and then the three to the four is going to be the. Uh, the most difficult uh, sequence of balls here in this rack. That ten's protecting that two, so you got to decide. I mean, he's gonna his speed's gonna have to be real good here. That three is kind of there. He's gonna go widen it out. It's a good shot there because you're inviting the corner pocket into play. But that was the bigger zone to get into. So that's a, a good sign for Cornell. That means he's uh, he's got the speed down really well. He wanted a little angle here. He didn't want to be... 
he might have to come down for the side. I don't think he'll play for the combo, the 4-7. He wanted a little angle so that he could have come across to just to the uh, top side of that uh, side pocket and just bounce off the rail a little bit. He might be able to force it there. That or he'll come down for the 4 in the side. No, nope, he was able to get across there. He just had enough angle. Man, his speed is looking real good right now. He punched that thing nicely and he got ball in hand position here, so... This is going to make Rory uh, take note of that, how good he's hitting him as far as the speed. Like you notice, Rory's speed wasn't nearly as good as Cornell's right now, and we'll see if that continues and if that makes a, a big factor in this match. Yeah, Cornell was never really ever uh, in danger in that whole run. Made it look easy. It's one to one. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Ryan Johnson in the booth here, Railbird Pool TV on Facebook and YouTube. Thanks for tuning in. Once again, if you're just joining us, uh, the brackets are on MPAPool.com. MPAPool.com, and the event will be right there when you pull up that website. You can check out all the brackets, the men's 10 ball, open 10 ball, and then the ladies have their 9 ball going right now, and then 8 ball starts tomorrow. There's senior divisions uh, along with the ladies open and then the men's open. So, yeah, Rory's going to want to uh, adjust his speed a little bit here as far as his cue ball on the position play in this rack here. Let's see how his break turns out here. He got the five. He slopped the five and he, he missed a little bit high on the, the two balls in the side so he's going to have to adjust his speed. And uh, where he hits it on the, the vertical access line too where he strikes the cue ball. He's going to have to make a slight adjustment there to get those balls to go straight in. He's got a thin cut here. I fully expect him to take this on here. He's just removing the template here. I think he'll take this on. He doesn't have any cover with the one, so if he plays safe, he's got to get the cue ball. He's got to focus mostly on cue ball because uh, he doesn't have any cover with the one. He's shooting the one to a naked area, so if you're playing safe here, you got to play the cue ball all the way, but I think he'll uh, take it on because it gives him position for the two, So, and the two to the three is not difficult, so I think you got to go here. Mm, he ran into the ball, and that's not going to be good. He's going to play safe here now, knowing Rory. I don't think he banks this. He could bank it all the way back, but I don't see Rory doing that. I think he's going to try to lock him up here. If he could tuck him under that 10, that would be real nice. Bank the two away, two rails, and try to slide him under. He's got a pretty decent wall of balls there. He's got the four. He's looking at maybe taking this on. I, I, Rory's usually pretty conservative, but, so I think he's playing safe here. He's cutting it. Wow, I can't believe he's going to cut this ball in. Yeah. Hits that better than I, than I seen from up here in the booth. That was definitely the shot. I wasn't sure if he could do that or not. Boy, he got a nice rub there. He's ideal on the three now. Everything else is looking good. The, the eight to the nine could pose a little issue because you want to be good on the nine to get on the ten. So He might have to stay on the short side of the nine. It's looking that way to me, but it's off the rail, so... Hmm, 
He didn't want to be elevated. He doesn't like that. He's over the seven slightly. Plus, he's a little full on this six, too. So he's going to have to elevate and draw back to the short side here, I think, or punch into the rail and come back. Let's see what he chooses to do here. He could punch into the short rail and back out. Yeah, that's what he did. He's making it work. He can get on that side of the nine if he's rather full. I mean, he doesn't want any angle, though, so. Daniel, we're at Four Bears Casino and Lodge in Newtown, North Dakota. Opted to let his stroke out a little bit. He's still dealing with speed issues with the table. I mean, he's just never been, like, he's making it work. But you got to ask yourself, is this finally going to bite him? You know, consistently not quite getting where he wants. This is, uh, he's going to have to draw into the rail. I don't know if he can. He can't roll through this. He can cut it in the side, but I don't think he can roll through. I don't know. It's real close. He might be able to punch that and then force it to the, the short rail. But definitely, I don't think he can put topspin on it. And with a full stroke, he's looking right now. He might punch this slightly. But now to get on the nine real well is uh, going to be an issue here. He's going to draw out of it, it looks like. Yeah, he, uh, he drew just enough to avoid the corner. That will work. He's grinding already in rack two, just like rack one, so... Doesn't have to do a lot here, just pinch it back a little bit. I don't think he can come across. He might be able to come across for the left corner. Yeah, he tried to. He tried to force it. That's why he overcut it, because he was he wanted to create angle that wasn't really there. Instead of just pinching back six, maybe eight inches and taking a little bit of a cut. And uh, finally the position caught up with him. You know, the the below average position he's been playing for his standards. So he's down two to one. Uh, Cornell's breaking here in rack four. Thanks for joining us if you're just tuning in. This is 10 ball action in the uh, 10 ball open. It's one of the warm up tournaments. Uh, tomorrow night we get started with three different eight ball divisions. Ladies. Uh, the men's open, and then there's a senior division, 60 years and older. Cornell broke absolutely perfect last time. So we'll check this four and this five out again if he gets them to go straight in. And then gets that cue, the one to go back up table, and then the cue ball down there with it, up there with it. If he, if he gets the same break he had in that last rack he's going to be sitting good. No, he didn't hit it as good that time. You notice how it hopped off to the left? Didn't strike it as well. Rory don't have a straight shot on the one he's going to have. This is tricky here, but uh, 
He may choose to kick it, this ball. With where the 5, 9... Because you're going to get the worst end of the push. you got to remember that one. Any, anytime you're pushing, you're at a disadvantage, especially on a bar box. So you can always look to, to roll out to a, a, especially when the, the lowest ball's in one of the four, four squares or four corners of the table. It's just really difficult to roll out. So he might look to just kick right here. He's got a pretty big ball with the one, being that it's near the rail. The two is right out there. So I don't I don't see him pushing out here. I think he got to go with the kick here and you try to hit that second rail before the one so that you can split that gap between the seven and the six. Because rolling out unless you're going to tie a ball up or roll to a better kick, which I don't think he, you're really rolling to a better kick. He's going to roll down here and this is interesting. He's just going to let him see a part of it. It's really close whether he can feather that and get him behind the seven. I don't think he can. It's really close. He's got to hit it full and maybe twist it just a slight amount with a little bit of left spin to get that one out of the way. Yeah, that's a smart decision. See, see if Rory was going to end up kicking here, he might as well just have kicked on that last shot. And I think he didn't want, really want to push to here. He didn't get where he wanted on his push out. I'm really surprised he didn't kick the last time. Because you're going to get the worst end of the, the rollout. So. I mean, he's got a big ball here, too. Fully expect him to make this. And he did. It's a good shot there. He's doing it the hard way, though. <laughs> it's got a little too much angle here to hold for the three, I believe. I don't know if you can hit the full part of the pocket. And he doesn't like to bunt balls, knowing Rory. So this is, uh, I don't expect him to bunt this. But, I mean, he's going right into the balls. If, if he could hit the five, maybe, with some kind of control. And then have a shot on the three. Looks like the 5-9 is pretty close set for the lower left. He may be able to go into the 3. Yeah, he's going forward. It looks like he's going to try to go into that 3 ball. No, he went into the 5 with the extra speed, which caused... It cuts in the lower uh, upper right if you want the shot, but uh, Rory's really creative with his safeties, so let's see if he can punt that uh, three in behind that seven six and put the cue ball down in behind the ten. He's got a nice little wall of balls there with the seven six four, and then put him in right behind the ten ball. He could cut it in the side. He just went, he played the really simple one. Left him the keyhole. That's his, his speed just has not been where he wants it. Now Cornell's just going to bank it away and stick him in on those balls there. Got to get, got to get him. Oh, he let it out. He, he let it slip. He let top spin. He didn't get the ball to stop. Yeah, he didn't quite cue it clean there. Howdy there, folks. Thanks for tuning in to Railbird Pool TV here. If you're just joining us, we're at the Four Bears Casino and Lodge here in Newtown, North Dakota for the annual uh, Four Bears Classic. This is 10 ball action. 
the ladies have their nine ball uh, tournament going on, coinciding with the men here. Uh, MPAPool.com, MPAPool.com, and you can find the brackets. Let's see if his speed is better. No, nope. a little bit of running English. It took off on him. He's just not, he's not finding his speed yet. He'll cut this in, or he'll try to. No, he played safe. Can't tell if he got him or not. He might have the edge of this. It's really close. He thought it was too thin to cut it, and he was going to lose the cue ball, so... That was a wise shot from Cornell there. If you don't feel like you're going to get position, there's no point to uh, taking the shot on, especially if the shot's already pretty difficult to start with. Rory's going to kick here to try to get some separation here. He must not have the edge of it. It's not a bad effort. I think he'll take that. Cornell can see probably half the ball, but he doesn't have anything aggressively attacking here as far as offense goes. He might have to thin this into the nine using the nine as a stopper on the three and then putting the cue ball in behind that seven, six, four, going three rails in behind the block blockers back there. And he'll have to use the, the nine to, to slow the three down. If he can get all the way in there and spin, if he can get it full enough, he'll leave the cue ball right there and bank the three away. But I don't think he can do that, though. I think you got to use the nine as a stopper with the three. And then send the cue ball long in behind those. That's seven six four. But he's at the table. He might see it. Something that I just can't see from up here in the booth. Main thing you want to do is focus here on the cue ball all the way. You got to get the cue ball safe. Not sure what he was attempting to do there. Because he didn't try to go long with the with the cue ball there. Yeah, he's disgusted with himself there. I mean, that was uh, he didn't execute even remotely of whatever he was trying to do. I'm not sure really what he was if he was trying to make the nine. He might have been calling the nine. I didn't see if he pointed or not on it. That's the only thing I could think of there that he was playing the three nine combo, which is a, which was a tough shot. The the separation, the off angle, that was a very very difficult combination, even for a a rather forgiving pocket. This will be a test to see if he's adjusted his speed at all right here. This is a good speed test for him right here. Because he wants a good angle on this 5 so that he can attack that 6 aggressively. Is he going to be long? It's not bad there. Race to seven, Richard. Ah, uh, the turnout, Adam, it's, uh, oh, I don't know if it was, when I signed up, there was 53, I think it was. I signed up around 2 o'clock, so. But mpapool.com, the brackets are on there, so. Hmm. 
Well, that worked out real good for running into the ball there. That was uh, in fairness, it would have been pretty tough not to come up with something on the six ball there, the way he played it. But you don't really want to be running into balls like that. But It's going to be 2-2 here shortly. I think Rory will take a 2-2 scoreline, considering he has not. Been particularly solid with his cue ball. It's alternating break. 10 does not count on the break. Templates are allowed. Template racks. No 10 balls on the break, of course. Once again, uh, no early 10s. So if you make a 2-10 combo and call the 10, you just spot it and continue to shoot. It's a call pocket game for all balls. So if you're calling the 3 ball and you make the 7, the incoming player has the option to take the shot or, or give it back to the opponent. So... See if Rory adjusts here with his speed and his tip position on this break. The four and the six. They went a little bit low. So he's going to have to come up just slightly. Come up slightly on the vertical axis. Seven ten looks like it's pretty pretty set to this lower left pocket, so you're gonna want to be rather full on that. And the ten will just spot, so you'll have to keep that in mind. You might want to uh, play it to uh, move that seven slightly away from that area, but that's gonna be. With as close as they are, that's going to be a little tricky situation there, that 7-10, because that 10 is going to spot. Unless he decides to move him somehow before he gets there. He come up a little short here on the 3, but he'll draw over to the right rail and back across. Maybe to the middle of the table. Yep, there it is. Yeah, he's looking at that 710 now. Where he can get it to move, where he can get that 7 to move out of that area because the 10, otherwise, it's going to be no good. If he could have come across uh, to the left of the 8 there, he could have ran into that 9. And, and move those balls apart and had insurance with the five ball sitting right there. Now I think he's going to be pretty much forced to play the combo now. But yeah, just to the left of that eight, I think he could have went right into that nine and... Uh, the five is sitting pretty good as long as you hit the hit the nine rather full or the top half part of the the north hand side of that nine as we're looking I think he would have been okay. It's a little thin here, he's probably gonna have to go two rails here. Yep. It's a good shot. He's ideal to get right where he's been lining up this whole time, right over there. This is the ideal position for that. 
it's real critical the angle you got with the cue ball going into the seven here to see if he can get that seven away from that racking area. Watch the side pocket here. Mm, this is not good here. This is not the angle you wanted on it. It will move the seven, but you're going to lose the cue ball a little bit now, though. But it might be a little bit more full than it looks to me, though. We'll see here. He was actually sitting almost perfect on it. I thought he'd come down a little bit further than that, but it obviously he didn't. He just actually overhit that ball, otherwise he would have been golden. Nice two rail position for the eight in the side. Well, it went. Wow, the table's playing fast. That'll work. Tables are playing real quick. Cornell's going to take a 3-2 lead. Nice out. He didn't want to be on the rail, but this won't be any issue. Uh, Mark, the draw is on mpapool.com. mpapool.com. Cornell takes a 3-2 lead. We are playing a race to seven alternating breaks. So we're starting to get into the midpoint of this match. I'll be in the booth till my match is called. There's one match in front of me that, or the, I was right at the cutoff point when they called the opening flight. So whenever a table opens up, I'm going to be in and up playing. So, well, he lost the cue ball there. Five to the six. So he's got some transition work here. Five to the six. The six to the seven. The seven to the eight. And the eight is pinched right in between, wedged in between the ten and the nine. So he's going to want to be real full on that eight. So get him a chance to get his stroke going too. Anytime your opponent scratches on the break, it's huge. You can steal one of their games and then, especially the ball in hand, I mean, it just allows you to start out right in line. And now he can get a real good feel for what the, the conditions are doing.
Well, he he's straight here. Ooh. Can he force this? He's gonna have to elevate and force this ball. He come up. He wanted to hit that second rail and just bounce off, probably about three or four inches, and he would have been ideal. But uh, Rory's got a heck of a stroke, so a powerful stroke. But this is you're gonna have to hit this good. He's gonna have to elevate and, and well, he's gonna try to go forward. It looks like here. He's gonna try to go forward and wrap around three rails. Wow. He did it. There's that powerful stroke. That'll be, from where he was at, I think he'll accept that for sure. Uh, the Kevin Cardinal match, I can look on the MPA site. I think if you go on there, they should have real-time scoring, uh, real or live scoring, because the score, I think you're able to keep track on your phone. So let me look here. Looks like he might have to, can he nudge the 10 here? and hold. I don't know. If not, he'll have to go all the way to the end rail and back down. No, he was able to hold it. It's a good shot. Yeah, if the players are using real scoring, it will, uh, I think it shows it on, or at least one match is showing up with real scoring, but not all of them, so I'm not sure. Some of them are not, so. Rory ties it up 3-3, three, three, so. How's the picture quality, everyone? Is everyone is uh, everyone able to see this uh, the the clarity pretty well? It's all new. So uh, it's a new com new system in that that Rachel set up here. So this is the first time she's really using it, I think. There, Rory got those balls to go in. He took a little bit of speed off of it that time. If you notice that, his speed, I mean, he hit it solid, but uh, he definitely took a little bit of the speed off there. So that, that's, uh, he, he dialed in. Let's see if he remembers that now for the next time he breaks. Yeah, I'm not sure the lagging issue, she was noticing something with that earlier. So I'll just have to mention it to her again and see if there's something that I think she's out playing a nine ball match right now. So we'll try to do the best we can, but uh, yeah, 
it's like it catches up. Sometimes I noticed, it, like on my screen here, it catches up, and then other times it's way behind. So it's, it's, I don't know if that's an internet issue. Ooh, you could be in trouble here. Hmm. He's going to have to elevate and get a, a draw shot here. He's got to draw back on his back, straight back a bullet, looking like maybe two feet. I can't tell if, I don't think he's going to go forward three rails, but he might have the angle to do that. Nope, he's elevating, he's coming backwards. Well, I am up, folks, so we'll leave the stream running here for you, and uh, we will be back after my match, so enjoy.
Hey guys, can someone give me a heads up if their stream is still laggy and cutting? I can actually try to reset it and change some settings. We got some new equipment, so next um, hour or two I'll be trying to work out the kinks. So if someone can comment and let me know if I should reboot the stream after this game, we can give that a try. <laughs> 